I had a request from a couple of you guys as far as doing a video on how I was able to sublimate or put my images on my labels, which is I'm using for my purse and bag. Um, the material that I used was uh, polyester canvas. And the reason why I use polyester canvas is because in sublimation, when you use polyester, you get the most brilliant color. When you use cotton, you get a more duller color. And once I realized that the canvas that I was using to make the bags or what came in was a polyester, 100% polyester, I got the idea that I can basically sublimate my tags on. And the reason why I like using this, like unlike a lot of polyester, this does not fray. So I can basically stitch down my label and I don't have to worry about it fraying. Um, so that's what I, basically I came up with. Um, how did I get into sublimation? Um, basically, I did what everybody else do. I YouTube, watch videos until I figured it out. And one of the hardest things was for me to figure out was what machine, was there a special machine that you use for sublimation? And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> um, basically, you can use a basic printer for sublimation. The one that I recommend is the machines that I recommend are the Eco Tanks. They are the most basic of machines that basically I don't have to open it up. I don't have to trigger nothing out. I don't have to install nothing that's too complicated. All I had to do was install my inks, and I'm explain how I did that. So the um, printer that I use is the Epson Eco Tank 2760. There are more um, um, products in this product line other than this one. Um, basically, I think I'm using the bottom of the line one, truthfully, um, but it works perfectly well. Um, I love Eco Tank printers because once you can print out so much on them. So this is actually my second printer. Um, my first printer is a normal printer. I use the Epson uh, inks in that printer. And this one, I use sublimation inks. And when you buy your printer, you can get it, um, you can buy your printer basically from Sam's Club. You can buy it from Walmart. You can buy it from Office Max. I mean, there's a whole host and numerous stores. I'm pretty sure you can buy it from Amazon if you don't want to go out. But there's a whole host of stores that basically sell these printers. The price range, they range in price from $150 to $250. I've seen them as high as $250. I bought mine for about $199. And I actually, I think um, it was listed at $199. I actually got it for $150 because of some type of promo, promo that was going on at the time. Um, basically... Once you get your printers um, here or home, basically, when you install them, um, basically you want to keep the containers your ink came in. You want to rinse those out. They just twist off. There's nothing complicated about it. You don't have to have a special screw or undo anything like that. All you have to do is unscrew it. And for me, since I had a eco tank printer downstairs i was lucky i didn't have to throw my inks out so i wasn't wasteful i ended up putting my inks in my printer downstairs and then I rinsed the bottles out keeping the same color for color i put in sublimation inks where did i get my sublimation inks amazon um let me see if i can pull it back up here and i can tell you which sublimation inks i got i know that the sublimation inks Basically, uh, costs $25.99. So, I'm just looking out here so I can give you guys really... Alright, so my, um, my sublimation ink is called Printer Jacks 400mm Sublimation Ink Refill for the Epsons. Um, I then used the paper I bought was A-Sub Sublimation Paper. It was an 85 by 14 That cost $20.99. The sublimation ink again cost $25.99. And pretty much that was all you need to buy. Um, if you already have I already had a heat press machine, so that was not something I bought. As you can see, I own the Brother Scanning Cut, and before that I have a Cricut. Um, so 
basically I was already doing heat press with vinyl. So people who already got the heat press, you don't have to buy anything special. Um, pretty much you can use uh, any heat where you can regulate the heat up to 401 degrees. Um, our heat press is already turned on. So it's already set for 401 degrees. You want to be able to hold that temperature setting and pressure on whatever you're, uh, um, you're supplementing for about 40 seconds. That is actually what the paper is recommending that you hold the pressure on your, um, that the, um, that the time that you set as far as holding pressure and heat onto the paper and the paper and your fabric. If that makes sense. It probably doesn't, but just stick with me. <laughs> anyway, so with that being said, that's basically how I got my printer. I just bought it from the store. I filled it with sublimation inks that I got from Amazon. In a nutshell, that's all I did. All right. Now, once you're ready, okay, now the next thing you have to do is you have to come up with a design for your labels. Okay, so, and... Uh, one question that was on uh, the feed was, how did I come up with the design for the labels? Okay. In a nutshell, keep your design simple. I mean, if you, if, if instead of drawing a whole figure of a lady, maybe draw the outline of a lady. And then start creating, then start messing with different fonts. If you like a... I think Oakland Roots use a dog, and it's a basic triangle with a nose and two eyes, but it's a beautiful design because it's very simple and it's beauty and simplicity. And especially when you're talking about something that's going to be on a one inch by one inch piece of fabric, you don't want a whole lot on there. So when you do your design, keep your design simple. I mean, uh, one lady, I thought, she did it so beautifully, messing around with her initials. And fonts and that's all she did her design off of but it was a beautiful design so keep your design simple it doesn't have to be don't make this into something more than it really has to be um it, I mean it's it's not I want to say it's not rocket science so let's keep it let's keep it to you know the simplicity the beauty and simplicity all right so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is um once you get your design, once you get the design, you have to have some type of Word doc or Photoshop program where you can duplicate that design into rows and um, basically rows and columns. And you want them evenly spaced out. Now, it's gonna, that's kind of a little bit harder for me to explain because if you all don't have Photoshop, it doesn't make any sense. But if you do have Photoshop, you know how to basically line up your items because Photoshop basically snaps your um will snap any image and align it for you as you basically place them on the page um if you have word doc you might be more familiar i'm not as familiar with word doc and how to arrange pictures on there because i have messed with photoshop basically for 10 15 years and never had to do it in a word doc um item um so if you have word doc you would know how to do it from there or whatever program you're using you want to line it up in rows and column so when you basically want it to look something like this just rows and columns once you get rows and columns situated out now once you get rows and columns situated out it's time for you to print now once it's time to print there's only two things that you really need to know to do so we're gonna click on here under your printer settings, when it's time to print, you basically want your printer settings to be set to normal paper, normal bright white paper, but high quality. And then you want to set your um, printer setting to mirror image. You need the um, your sheet to come out a mirror image. So once that's set, you can push print. And here I need to proceed. I'm going to push OK a couple of times. And then it will just print out. Now, once it prints out, 
at this point, you have to decide where are you going to place these images on. Like I said, you want to use 100% polyester or some a polyester blend that is mostly polyester. Again, the um, as you start to get from 100% polyester, the more faded the look of your sublimation is going to look. Okay. And with that being said, if you want to print this on ribbons, all you got to do is just cut these out into strips. Put them on your heat press machine. Put the ribbon on your heat press machine and heat press that way. If you, in my case, what I like to do is I just like to make a template of my paper. Take my uh, canvas sheet right here and we're going to basically place it down like this where the sheet is on the bottom, the paper is on the top, one more time, anyway, and the paper is on the top, and then that way I can get my images. I'm going to show you how I do that right now. So, I'm just going to undo this paper. You can use parchment paper. I just like to use what I have, and I have a whole lot of that paper. But I just use this paper, and this paper is mostly used just to protect your um, heat press machine. You don't want double images onto your felt at the bottom of here. And you don't want to use your Teflon. So we're going to put basically a, protect a protective sheet down. You want to feel for not the rough side, but the smooth side of your canvas. And this side is the smooth side. There's a rough side and smooth side. You want your rough side to go onto the paper. You want to take this side right here, and we're going to place it on top. Now, at this point, you can use, um, they have tapes that will keep this still, but I found if I just nice and neatly set it on and push it down. I don't have too much shifting going on. If you get any shifting, you might get ghosting. But So if you want to, you can use basically special tapes that will heat press tape that will keep your image from moving. But I'm not worried about that. So, But I'm just letting you know So if, if you're wondering about that. All right, here we go. So I'm going to just press this down. Now this is going to go down for about 40 minutes. 40 seconds, not minutes, we're not going to be here that long, and this paper will burn. 40 seconds, and then I should be able to get an image. And 40 seconds never seemed like it took so long. Now, once you take it off, you know that you'll notice that the image here has basically dulled out and faded out. If you pick up your sheet, there we go. And then you'll notice that your image have appeared basically onto your polyester canvas. Again, polyester works give you the most bright, bright and vivid colors. The other uh, canvas, the um, cotton tends to fade. Now, I haven't tried this, but by all rights, if you're working with any type of cotton or 100% cotton, then by all rights, heat transfer paper for cotton should work. I haven't tried this. Somebody would need to try it and tell me if it works or not, or take a bit of edge of a paper and a piece of uh, cotton is tell me if it worked or not. But by all rights, you may not even need to buy all of this. You might just need to buy heat transfer sheet, heat transfer paper. Um, no, like for t-shirts and see does it also work. But that's just an idea that I'm throwing out there. Um, again, I have not tried it. But this is the results. After this point, all you need to do is basically like a, any person who quilts, you just gotta square off and start cutting out your rows and cutting out your columns. 
And that's how I created these labels. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.